Hey everyone and welcome to Television from the Multiverse, the DC TV podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and joining me as always is Connor. Yes it is. I don't know why I said it with that weird inflection. That was a bit odd. Connor. Yeah. I was like, are you going to say something else after that or are you just kind of stopping there? Connor as the deck i don't know uh we talk about dc tv shows coming up <laughs> we have reviews of supergirl batwoman the flash and arrow um no news this week at least not from my uh my skim of the the things uh but i don't think there was anything big this week uh so we got four shows to talk about and um, we're going to dive in and we're going to okay. get into it uh we'll start off with supergirl season five episode five it's called dangerous liaisons and uh, there was, there was VR meetings, the launch of tech. There was British dude. There was British dude, um, William. Who's, yes, who's name, William. Thank you. you I, I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I remembered. Uh, British dude, William. But more importantly, though, uh, his old friend, who's also this, uh, was it was it Rip Roar, the the Rip villain, Roar, yeah, of the episode, who looked like he was in a knockoff RoboCop outfit. He looked cheap as shit, and I hated it. He is uh, exactly half as good as Doc Ock. <laughs> I don't know. Every time he was on screen, he looked terrible. Um, so the whole thing is that he's working for, for what turns out to be Leviathan. The old woman from Leviathan from the end of last season comes I, back. I'm really glad that they put her in the previously on, because otherwise I'd have been like, who the hell's this? <laughs> I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention during the previously on, and it wasn't until the end of the episode where they actually mentioned the word Leviathan. I mean, oh, she was the old woman that talked to so-so, <laughs> so, so, you know, test marker last season that's yeah. right um so the, the you know Kara is looking into this as is william and because william has been revealed to be a good guy who's just pretending to be a dick um he's clearly the love interest now and they have a lot of like oh i don't want anything to ha- happen to you Kara. i would be i would be heartbroken if anything ever happened to you i'm like oh my god i hate this why is this season so shit someone tell me <laughs> it is terrible isn't it <laughs> somehow somehow we've stumbled at, i mean is it is it middle of season two bad yet i don't know i, I don't know if i'm wanting to make that it's been too long since i've seen season two to really make that claim do you, do you know what i will say though is middle of season two was was bad but it was contained to maybe like six episodes we're five episodes in and we're already kind of uh, all right mostly contained yeah the mostly. Worst. whereas okay we're, we're already five episodes in now and at least three of them have been not good. Why is it every time Kara has a love interest, the, the quality tanks? What, what What is it about that specifically? It's, it's it's weird. But yeah, so William is just generic British man, and he he's being. Very... I really hate how overly British his accent is. <laughs> There's something really, yeah, awkward and posh about it that he's really putting on. Like, he really wants to have the most delightful sounding British accent he possibly can. Uh, makes me want to punch him. It'd be like if I introduced a show as follows, right? That's obviously not a, a, an English accent, but if I, if I was trying to... I think I see where we're going here. If I was trying to do my posh Scottish accent, I'd be like, Welcome everyone and welcome to Television from the Multiverse! We're going to talk about the DC television shows. Like, uh, it'd be like if I did that. I, I feel that would bring an air of respectability <laughs> to the show. <laughs> My fake posh Scottish voice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah, so they look at that. There's a lot of oh, don't get. I don't want you to get heart carrots. Too dangerous. And she's like, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Damn it. And he's like, fine. Obviously, he doesn't know she's Supergirl for at least a few episodes. At least I mean, uh, <laughs> probably won't be that long until he finds out. Uh, yeah, maybe by next week. Yeah, but uh, you know, they they break into Andrea's office. He thinks Andrea's family's behind all this stuff. Um, which they kind of disprove when the big plan that the villain has later uh, involves wiping out the entire Pacific coast, which would ruin their entire business. But then the final reveal is that she does know this old woman from Leviathan uh, and does seem to know that she's up to shady shit. She didn't know she was up to this tidal wave thing because she's like, oh, that was you yesterday. But she does seem to be in cahoots in some capacity with Leviathan. Presumably in the VR angle. Probably. Are you confused? Am I confused? Just in general, I mean, just everyone, like... Okay. When I, when I, when I say 
when I ask a question like that on the show, it's 50-50, it could be you, but it, there's an equal chance I'm just talking to the audience. It, it was the way I said something, and then you went, are you confused? I was like, did I say something that sounded like I was? No, no, I was just, I was just, I was, I was, honestly, you jumped in and said whatever you said, I wasn't paying attention. I was just adding on, are you confused, as a capper to my explanation of the convoluted mystery back I, and I, forth. I get that now. That would have made more sense if I hadn't said something. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to just not use my line. I wanted to say it, so I said it no matter what. Bite me. <laughs> that is a really, really a bit of a dick move there. <laughs> yeah, you could, have, you could have just kept it in your back pocket and come back to it later. But no, no you're like, no, just, I'm just ramming it in now anyway. Yeah, yeah. So... That, that was the thing. Um, yeah, the villain who looks like a cross between a cheap Robocop and a cheap Doc Ock, uh, who turns out to be the, the, the best friend of British man William, uh, he... Russell. Russell, there you go. I wasn't going to care enough to His, his name I remembered. William? <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, he, he's, he uses this, this weird bomb thingy to detonate... I guess they were in one of the, the north or south pole. I, I wasn't really... I'll admit, I maybe missed a line of dialogue here explaining where they were going. Uh, yeah, me too. But uh, it was well, somewhere. Ace caps uh, somewhere, um, and he detonates a bomb that sort of like explodes from underneath the ice. And the whole idea is that this will melt all the water and create a t- giant tidal wave, and like the entire Pacific coast is going to be flooded. In fact, well, I don't know. I think I'll tell a lie. Uh, the, every every coastal place in the planet is going to flood, and there's going to be billions of deaths. That that was the. The, it was pretty extreme, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have Supergirl and uh, Jean like flying in circles and using her freeze breath and you know whatever the the the, the stopping it is fine. Um, that's the big set piece of the episode. Dreamer's also stopping a tidal wave, uh, which is apparently going to hit the entire coast. <laughs> and she's just st- she's, she's got it covered. She's stopping it with a swirly. Yeah. Why, why, why do we need Supergirl? When we got Dreamer. What what got me at the end of that 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 scene is when the tidal wave goes away. She suddenly goes like, hmm. And there's like a little, hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. Um, to be fair, she did just stop like at least this entire city being flooded. So, you know, I, I normally find Brainy to be one of the more consistently pleasant elements of this show. Generally speaking, that is a, you know, a wise rule. And he's not unpleasant in the sense that in this episode that I'm, I'm not saying he became unlikable and that him as a character is fine however the actor here jesse rath um has his worst scene in the entirety of the show yeah where he puts on the spidery tattoo things from the last episode and he can control it but basically they've got i mean i I laughed at the trigger phrase which is pop quiz hot shot because he says oh there's a secret trigger phrase to like turn this on so you can talk to the alien entity that i've now attached to myself um i got it from the was it the over of, of uh, Keanu Reeves or uh, something he said and they look yeah. at the, the note it's like Al- pop, qu- pop quiz hot shot <laughs> Alex is just like Brainy really I feel I, I, th- I thought it was previously established that Alex is quite fond of action films I feel like she would be if anything what they should have played this scene like is that Alex was, thought it was pretty good and went oh that's, that's pretty smart Brainy and then Kara's like pop quiz hot shot <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, he just his acting like when he's doing this it's all these like sh- extreme uh, fish eye close ups of him as the alien's talking but his acting is just really bad I thought uh, in this from, from above as well like looking yeah. down him right at that, that side on angle ugh terrible it all seems just very unpleasant in a kind of amateur kind of way uh, but yeah that was that was that was basically yeah there wasn't a whole lot more to it um, you know there, there was some really awkward scenes where Williams, like, oh my god, I can't believe Andrea isn't a murderer and her, her family's not like part of this worldwide crime syndicate. Um, oh well, I guess we have to figure this out together, Kara. Yep, you and I. I can never do this without you. There's um, Love interest. a really horrible moment between the two of them where it's, it's very early on in the episode. She's texting him, it's like, oh, come meet up and we'll, you know, we need to talk. And and they do, and they, and they meet there and, and they're, they're, they're making drinks that, you know, the the main, like, they're getting coffee or whatever it is. And uh, you know she's pouring all the you know sugar in whatever, and then he walks off, and she follows him, and she just leaves her drink there. <laughs> it was really bugging me for the rest of the scene because he carries his, he puts his lid on his, and walks over with it. It's like come and talk over here out of the way, and she's like fine, and just leaves hers there. And I'm like, I mean, 
we know she's not really doing this because she cares about getting a drink. So I mean, no, no, I, I can let that go. It makes it's sense. Weird that no one else. There's, there's all these people around. Like, hey, your, your drink's there. And and if she's supposed to be, yeah, pretty good at this whole undercover thing, having a double a double identity her whole life, you know. Uh, but apparently, she can't remember to to carry a cup of coffee. What? No one's going to think this is suspicious. The the only critique you can have of anyone in this scene is that none of these several other people around them at the time go, "Hey, miss, she left your coffee there." As if she's yeah, forgotten I, I, that. I have a critique of that as well. That, that bothered... Honestly, it got to the end of the scene, and I was waiting for her to look around and go, "Oh, I forgot it," and it just cut away. I'm like, "Fine, whatever." <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> I care. I care. No one cares. Not nor should you. It's just this this irrelevant. Um, Do you know what I think it is? I th I think it's just she gets very animated with her hands when she's doing that that, that passionate speech to him. She can't be throwing coffee like, around everywhere. Like, can't have coffee in my hands for this. So they just went, just leave it over there. They didn't think to just not have her have coffee, just have her with him and, and he can be getting coffee. She had to have one as well and then just leave it. Yeah, it was a really bad scene between her and John actually early on where they're just having like a heart to heart and he's like oh how you know like she's like oh how are you doing john he's like well i found out you know i betrayed my entire people and you know i raised my memory of my my brother and all, all this and like he lists off this like extreme list of things he's like but you know maybe some good can come from this maybe i can learn about my people more now <laughs> and then he's like how about you you've been through a lot too he's like yeah i found it about william think he's a bad guy now he's not a bad guy and it was just them it was the pair of them summing up what's happened for each of the characters in the last like two or three episodes and, and, and you're kind of like this is what a previously on for. Yeah, that, that just it, it felt like a waste of like three minutes. It was terrible. Um, was I bad. yeah, I, I was not into that scene at all. Uh, the only other thing left to talk about really um, is uh, the subplot with Lena and uh, Mal, where she duplicates his Inception power. Yeah, and she ha she has it at the end. She's got the green eyes, and she's she's doing it. It's just what we needed, Lena Luthor that can do this. We know this with powers. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so... I was basically... I have nothing... Like, Supergirl sucks right oh. now. Um, what? Kelly was terrible. Oh, Kelly, you're right. I forgot about <laughs> Kelly. Ke <laughs> date anniversary. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the date anniversary. How could I forget the date anniversary? Oh my god, I hate this <laughs> so much. I hate all uh, of it. Yeah. This, this, <laughs> even in an episode of Terrible Things, this stood out as terrible. And she gets all emotional. She breaks down in the bathroom at the end because she she saw Alex out in the street like saving people. And was like, oh my god, you know my my fiance died. That you know. Yeah, it's not like she was fighting a Martian in in your apartment like two weeks ago. Yes, which honestly felt more dangerous given that it was a superpowered being she was fighting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she she's 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 breaking down and 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 whatever. Um, I, I, uh, there was one small touch I liked in the scene because when she's at the, the dinner table uh, waiting for Alex uh, it's during the launch of the big whole VR, VR. thing and you know the, the, all episodes Andrew's been like oh everyone let's talk about millions of subscribers every article should talk about the, this launch in some way god damn it get it in your articles and when she puts them in and she's like sort of sitting there and in her head like in her VR she's like in a field and she's watching Andrea make this speech I do like at one point it cuts to like a uh, back to her in the real world and she's still sitting there with her eyes just all white because she's looking at this vr and there's just this little there's a couple like just like sort of over to the side who sort of look around at her and just sort of shrug and go what a weirdo <laughs> and just go back to yeah. their food um it's a little thing but amuse me <laughs> yeah on, on the little things that are weird yeah why does andrea star in her own adverts because she thinks she's like I don't know, because she's got an ego, because, I mean... It, it's just, it just seems weird to me. CEOs don't star in their own adverts. Not typically, but, like, um, I, I'm going to make a wrestling comparison here, but this is this is the perfect this is the perfect thing to talk about, right? Vince McMahon ha has made himself such a prominent character in his own product when he's actually the CEO, right? He is the, he's the owner, he's the chairman of the entire WWE, and he has been a staple of and i feel like are we really that far away from like a facebook ad with mark zuckerberg try to act like he's cool like being hip he's like yeah i'm down with the kids i'm a mom i would ad. say yes but only because have you seen the guy he comes across as a robot <laughs> perfect it'll be gold you know are we, are we really that far away from i don't know um Honestly, the only CEO who springs to mind that could i could even see kind of doing this and hasn't done it yet which is telling 
mm. is probably Elon Musk. I don't know. I, I, I want to see an Amazon ad with Bezos. Um, <laughs> I, I actually think all ads now for these big companies should feature the CEOs trying to like sell us the product themselves. Like, try- <laughs> Honestly, I'd be more impressed. <laughs> try to be hip and cool. But like, hey guys, I'm, I'm the Bezos. And I'm here to tell you about Amazon Prime. Is, is he the Bezos Nizos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are expanding our video catalog. See what I did there? See what I did? Because yeah. they said the expanse. You see? Yeah. Uh, very good. So, all right, that's super cool. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, to, to Batwoman. Season 1, Episode 5 is called Mine is a Long and Sad Tale. And this episode is primarily uh, Kate with with uh, Alice, and because she goes goes and sort of be supported guys as Batwoman, which I actually thought was a pretty decent little scene. You know, she's in the dark and she's like fighting them, and you just see like the the silhouette yeah. kind of. It, it was a really little scene. By, by the way, I saw an interview that said after the last episode, they are officially caught up in the timeline with Elseworlds now. That that Elseworlds happened just after episode four, apparently. All right. Okay. So right after she got the suit, basically. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so, yeah, so, so she fights, fights all the bad guys. Decent little scene. Uh, she has Alice, and Alice says, I'll talk to you if we go to this place and they go to this diner. And basically, the episode is a, is, is a lot of flashbacks. It's the flashback story. Although, unlike Arrow, though, this is not every episode, so it, it didn't make me grow. And it's like, okay, this is a focused, and sto- clear story. I will say the flashbacks didn't have the same janky, horrible filter that the the ones in the first episode had. Yeah, no, no, they didn't. And, and it made sense. Everything in the present story was also related to what the flashback was, so it never felt like it was wasting time. It was always to the point. This is what it is. Now, admittedly, this got a lot more extreme than I was expecting in these flashbacks. Now, I don't remember, like, Alice's, like, backstory from the comics. It's been a while since I've read that stuff, that early stuff. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't remember if she was raised by a Hannibal Lecter-esque dude. Um, but... Uh, it took me by surprise. See when it got to like she finds like a skin mask, like a face skin mask in in a sink, and I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> what's happening here? Yeah, uh, um, they held her captive. Is it, is it supposed to? Be, is it doll dollmaker? Is that the, is that the villain's name? Is it supposed to be dollmaker? Because I, 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 I'm saying the one from the early New Fifty Two. Mm. Uh, it was I think it was Detective Comics, Tony Daniels Detective Comics stuff. Is that dollmaker? So I think that was the. I think they gave him Dollmaker. Uh, you know, it, it, it was the family that did this. But, okay, uh, okay, I can see it. Because yeah, obviously the son's grown up. He's he's mouse. Uh, the mouse that we yeah. heard about last week. And yeah, we see that she was uh, held captive. She does get a phone call off at one point uh, to to her, her her dad. And we do see Jacob come running in uh, in this flashback. And um, we but we set up that the mouse has this ability. He's basically. <laughs> he's basically got the Terminator ability where he can mimic any voice perfectly and uh, he does he, so So they, they sort of convince him that she's not really here by his, no no my son did a prank phone call I'm so sorry he hears him doing the voice and he does the voice and that's kind of what rates it off they, they introduce it with the uh, the Leviosa from, yes. from Harry Potter which I chuckled at I'm sure you did I'm sure you did but so they set this up he's got a scarred face but he can do he can do voices and uh, that's whatever. Which actually leads me to another scene I want to talk about here while we're talking about voices, because obviously this was dubbed, because it wasn't the kid really doing this. Yeah. Some of the worst ADR I've seen in one of these shows was in this episode. There's a scene where Mary and her mother are walking down, like, a, like it's like a, you know, the river or whatever it is, uh, mm. this, sort of, this waterway in the city, and... Every, this, this was ADR. Did it make it makes sense why they're shooting next to the water? That's probably you know simple reasons. Standard noise, yeah. Uh, but it was so badly ADR. Like it was so over the top. Like when I, mean, I say over the top, I don't mean over the top, and it was really animated. I mean it was just so clearly over the top of everything else. It was so it sounded like it came from a studio. And it yeah, felt, there was a. I can tell you exactly what the problem is. Go on. Bad reverb. Bad reverb. There you go. Uh, that was the explanation. When, when you're ADRing something, you have to put the appropriate reverb for the environment that you're in so you know if you're in a tight tiled bathroom you'll hear it bouncing around a lot yes uh outside next to water you know it, it's it'll be kind of dispersed uh, a lot more uh and it's just fitting that to that scene is is how it feels it, 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 it almost felt like it was the wrong voices because it was so yeah it, it was bad disconnected it really stuck out to me and all i could think about during this scene because this is a scene where her mother is telling her that she faked the, the the medical report and it was actually a deer 
you know carcass or bones that were yeah, bones yeah, yeah. Um, which, I mean, Mary's probably my favourite character in this show, and I have to admit, I enjoyed her being drunk around... Uh... Really? I hated all that stuff. I was okay with this. It was mildly amusing. I think I got a chuckle towards the end, like, right at the very end of this stuff, where she's walking out with the pizza, sure. For most of it, when, when she's just like, how many people have I killed? And and, and he's like, she's like, why are you hesitating? It's zero. I'm like, oh, all right, I get it. You're the jealous sister right now. I'm, I was I'm mildly amused by it. I, I, she's she's likable enough. Um, and he's okay as well. I, I think they, they made for a, a reasonable pair. That he, He's fine. I think the problem is because we kind of hit on the jealous sister thing. I think it was last episode, the episode before. And this just went, hey, remember that? I'm still hung up on that. And it was just so over the top that it, it bothered me. I don't know they it, it, it worked well. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not annoyed by it yet. But uh, back to the other stuff. So, so Kate's been shown around this house that she was held captive in. You know, Alice was held captive in as a kid, and they're, they're showing this to show that in the flashbacks that like Alice and uh, this kid, or I should say Beth, but you know what I mean. Alice and this kid Mouse, like they kind of bond. They become kind of a brother sister dynamic. He gives her Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you know, obviously where she gets her persona from and all of her. Oliver Patter, and yeah, it kind of sets up. And obviously, uh, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure it's the actor who played the dad in the flashbacks is now playing grown up mouse. Uh, you could be right. I think uh, it was because he's, he's got longer hair than that now, so they've got like a wig on him and stuff. But like, yeah, like I, I think it was the same actor, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's an obvious thing. If, to if do. it's not, it's pretty good casting and getting someone to look yeah no. close enough that you go, oh yeah, that could be a son. No, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but Jacob and uh, Sophie or Sophia is it Sophie or Sophie? I don't. I feel like it's Sophie. It's Sophie. Um, do, do you know what I think it is because there's a there is a character in the in the rebirth uh, battle yes. and stuff. Sophia. I think that's where you're confusing that from. Probably. Uh, but they're in pursuit because Kate kind of intentionally lets them track her call at one point, so they they know where they're going. Um, and. Uh, Jacob finally the whole point of this really is that Jacob finally admits and realizes this is Beth like he he now sees it and believes it and then Alice stabs him <laughs> and he's stabbed uh does not get killed does a bit of a standoff <laughs> she stabs him and then he's stabbed he, then he's stabbed yes uh like poetry it rhymes yeah. so um he uh he's stabbed and there's a bit of a standoff where you know Sophie's got the shotgun out and They've got both Alice and uh, and Mouse and all that, but uh, they get away, and it's just kind of them. Like she, she's been because that's actually what starts the plot of this episode off is that Alice has been stealing parts of flesh from various mortuaries around the around the yes. city. She is taking it from dead bodies. Like she's not killing people to do this. Uh, that is true. That is true. Because uh, that's her defense. Later, she goes, "Well, I didn't hurt anyone." Yeah, it's a bit icky, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. truth in that. It's it is objectively better. It's objectively better than murdering innocent people. Yes, this is this yeah. is true. Uh, so, and she gives him this is his gift because uh, he gives her uh, uh, the book again, Alice in Wonderland. She gives him a, a slab of flesh, uh, <laughs> as you do. Uh, they mentioned it was yeah. an Arkham, which yeah, is yeah, nice new face mask, isn't he? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, so, and he was, uh, I believe, the waiter at the restaurant as well earlier on that served him. He was wearing he the same shirt. Right. And he had long hair, yeah. so I think it was him. I, I think it was just that he, he, you know, he had a face mask on at the time. So, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. A different face. Uh, so, yeah, that was that. Um, I don't think it was an easy enough one. Honestly, this episode went in relatively quick. I had a really focused story it was telling. It was very focused. not a lot of sides, though. Like you say, you got the stuff with, uh, with, with the sister and... and, and... Luke's yeah, I mean, Mary and Luke, Luke yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and that was that was very clearly just supposed to be a little of a, a bit of comic relief because everything else was so, you know, misery, silence of alarms. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> like yeah. A, so. Yeah. I did chuckle, I think it was him telling her about the, uh, the Arkham breakout. Oh yeah, she yeah. Was like, uh, what Arkham Breakout? I was like, where, where have you been? It's like, hey, I wouldn't know if it was an Arkham Breakout. It would be all over the news. <laughs> yeah. She, she's like, she's like, <laughs> What Arkham breakout? Because the breakout from Arkham. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep, that's one way of doing it. Just, just repeat it again. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That I mean, the narration still sucks. Uh, in fact, there was less of it this episode. Although I will say there was one line of narration that was awkwardly in between, like 
two other lines of dialogue there was like a sort of like you know those two characters were talking and the narration came back in like in between two responses and i thought oh, that was a bit weird <laughs> like don't do that yeah i really don't like it at the end of the episode yeah. it's still bugging me especially with it we're still framing it as oh she's saying this to bruce i'm like oh i'm bored of that already um yeah i wouldn't go on completely but i mean this was a new thing that i would also say just take it away because because you know that was the problem with the uh, the narration of the uh, the at the start of arrow originally mm -hmm. was solved when he got a team because there was people he could say these things to and you know then he didn't need to just narrate it okay there well well that's the problem because this is all so personal directed to bruce that i don't know when we will get there because it, it, we're already forming a team now that, that will be you know, uh, close enough like you know, well, well when bruce on, when bruce cameos at the end of the season he'll read them all and that'll be the end of it. Oh, please. <laughs> you read them all. Anyway, let's move on to The Flash. Season season 6, episode 5. It is called Kiss Kiss Breach Breach. Very good. Yeah. I think they're funny. Uh, so, yeah, Gypsy's dead. Uh, that's basically the, <laughs> that's how this episode kind of starts. Like, she's dead, by the way. Because uh, <laughs> Danny Trio shows up and he's like, oh, she's dead. Just sits on the end of Cisco's bed. It's like, yeah. She's dead. Well, like, yeah, next oh, to yeah. next to his new yes, girlfriend, might I add, he's, he's you know he's, he's sleeping in the bed with Camille, and and, and walks the the ex's dad, who's like, you know big scary dude, and he's like, she's dead. Um, so this episode may be one of the dumbest episodes of Flash in a long time, and that is saying something given how dumb this is on a regular basis. So yeah, this is up there. So we're going to talk about. So Barry actually takes the episode off. Barry and Iris go off on a vacation, um, and you know again. The start of this episode, she says to him, "Hey, with all this crisis stuff and you probably dying in seven weeks, is it really time to go off on a vacation?" And he's like, "Yeah, we should go off on a vacation. You know, the rest of the team's got it, and we we, we deserve some time." And I'm like, "No, universe-ending crisis oh, in man. a matter of weeks." I, 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 no, I'm gonna defend this of all things. He's already accepted that he's not surviving, right? Sure. So he's like, "Screw it. What's the point in trying to survive?" Because that's what I was like. We should be, you know, do, doing what we can to to, to fix this. He's already gone, no, I'm dying, it's fine. Let's just uh, make some memories. Just uh, give you a nice holiday before I go. Uh-huh. So, in their absence, though, because they are gone the whole episode, they, you know, they're back for, like, one scene at the end, but, like, yeah. it's, it's the right, one scene at the start, one scene at the end, they're gone for the rest of the episode, and we focus on everyone else. Cisco, knowing that Barry's taking a, a few days off, has made an AI, an app, called The Barry. Can you remember what it stands for? No, I don't know. I don't remember what it stands for. That was way too drunk. Um, uh, I, I do see, not remember see, that. See my tweet at the time for how drunk. He, uh, so basically, he explains it as for if you know Barry's on vacation or if Barry's going to be dead, because Barry's been a good leader. That's stupid allegedly. point number one. Because yeah. Barry's not been a good leader ever, and that, like, for some reason this season they keep trying to tell us that Barry's been this great leader and everyone's going to be lost without him. And I never felt he was a little, like like Wells was the leader in season one of the team, right? And then yep. after that they just kind of waffled around. I never felt that Bar Barry kind of stepped up to really feel like a leader. Um, if anything, Iris did a better job of being a leader when she was a leader well, for that one that's season. That's what I was going to say because we had we had Wells and then we had Harry who kind of became the leader. He kind of took charge. Yeah, they looked up to him. Um. Season three, I don't remember too well. Then that was that was the Flashpoint season, wasn't it? That may have been Irish season of being leader. I think that was four. Was that four? Okay, whatever. But yeah. I don't know. I just they keep trying to sell us that Barry's this great to the point where Cisco several times in this episode says, "Oh, I don't know what to do. Let me ask the Barry and see what the Barry says we should do." And I'm like, "What? This is stupid. No." Yeah, uh, George, what's baffling about this is never once uh, that I can remember. Have they gone, hey, Barry, what do you think we should do? Never. Yeah. There's never been, Barry, what should we do? That's, like, that has almost never happened. And there's a little cartoon Barry, like, as if it's a little app for kids. And then, like, they sort of, like, trick him. Be like, he's like, oh, sure, because they sort of test it. And like, oh, what's this? And it like, gets the answer right. He's like, oh, what's your favorite movie? Oh, Empire. Definitely Empire. And it says Jurassic Park. And he's like, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> like, the app gets it right. When Barry Barry got it yeah. wrong, it's kind of weird. I feel like you 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 kind of know your own favorite movie. You don't you don't go yeah. Do you know what that app you just whipped up in about a day? 
uh, probably knows better than me. Mm-hmm. You, you don't go, you know what? that might be wrong. You, you, you got, you know, it's it, not an important thing to get it wrong. On, you know, overall, your favorite movie, yeah, whatever. But I feel like you know your own favorite movie. You don't question that immediately. That said, picking Jurassic Park over Empire Strikes Back is a completely logical choice that makes complete sense. It is the wrong choice, but I will respect it anyway. It is the correct choice. Thank you very much. So, the, the plot of the episode is that Cisco and Camille, who's, who sticks around and kind of acts as his buddy cop partner, uh, are investigating the murder of Gypsy and uh, he there's a whole thing where it might be Cisco because all of a sudden he's been sleepwalking and all of a sudden... Oh. This might be a side effect because he get rid of his powers because this is a thing that happens when when vibes breach psychosis apparently yeah breach psychosis uh, so we get all this stuff that's just thrown out there like all I, of a sudden I laughed okay, bear in mind I'm quite drunk at this part already I laughed so hard at that first scene where he's sleepwalking he wakes up and he's got like the scissors and he's about to cut his hair and he just starts screaming I I just lost it <laughs> I don't know what it was it was just the the acting in that moment just just have me in stitches uh they say i love you for the first time they sort of tease that all episode so that's the thing uh the the villain turns out to be this big breach enemy that the gypsy was hunting that no one knows the true identity of but it turns out it's cisco from another earth it's cisco from whatever number of earth uh so cisco has to trap him and that's it the, 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 and also the acting from the the main like investigator dude that they meet on the crime scene he was terrible. Yeah. What can I say positive about it? Oh, I've got something I can say positive. No, they um no no no. They they start to tease all this horrible drama that I would have expected from any of these CW shows. Of you know, Cisco being all upset about his ex girlfriend having been murdered and the mm. new girlfriend getting going, Oh hey, have you still got feelings? I thought they were gonna do that. And Cisco's like, hey, I, I just want you to know, this isn't because I still have feelings for it. And she's like, no, no, I, I get it. Someone you care about died. You're supposed to have feelings. And I, w I was worried it was going to get a lot worse than that. So credit where it's due. It was just the one little awkward conversation. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> That's as positive as it can be. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, there's like one, there's like two scenes of blood work set up where. Ralph goes to get Killer Frost and Frost's like, no, I'll go and speak to Bloodwork on my own and see what's happening. And Bloodwork attacks her and walks away. And that's, <laughs> that's the whole thing. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, I got, nothing, I got nothing on Bloodwork. It's terrible. He's controlling his, his, his blood better. That's, that's basically the whole gist of it. It's just to remind you that he exists because he's not the focus of the episode. And then the other subplot is that Joe goes down, he's been tracking Nash Wells and they're down in the, the, the sewer and they get into a bit of a scuffle and the digger like laser device that Nash has fires and traps them. They get caved in down in the uh, down the sewer system. And we cut back to them every so often with them bickering about how to get out, uh, about Nash having faith. He knows and... right, tries to use his, his digger thing to get out but blows up, you know, and causes a fire and uses up a lot of the oxygen. Yeah, Joe believes the team will come and find them and uh, nationally, no one knows we're down here. This isn't, you know, we're, we're doomed. We have to find our own way out. Uh, it becomes this kind of, you know, and, and the monitors mentioned uh, the crisis is coming. And, and Nash gets very interested about that. He gets very interested once he realizes that they know anything about this. Uh, eventually, Ralph shows up and it's like, hey, did like one of my texts get through? Because obviously, they don't have a signal down here. He's like, no, 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 no. Um, you know, I got worried when you, they said you hadn't been to work in like so many hours. So I, I did some digging. I found, you know, where you were looking for, for Nash and your car. And uh, this was one of the parts, you know, it basically said that, no, like it mattered you went missing. So it was kind of a nice ending that proved Joe right that his team would come find him, that someone did. And because I think from the perspective of us, it was nice that we didn't know anyone was looking for him. Yeah, it would have been felt really cheesy if we'd been following Ralph doing this digging because it's not that much digging. No. So it would have been like just stretching it out. But when he, uh, no pun intended. But when he, it was not intended. No. But when he shows up at the end, it actually was kind of nice to feel good. Not even just when he shows up, it's, it's when he explains that no, no, like I didn't get a text. I just had to actually actively look because I was worried. It actually felt okay. You know what? That was a nice little payoff. Fine. Yeah. Also, just seeing Ralph stretch his way through the the yeah you know, the the one rock he'd busted out of the way was kind of just amusing still. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, 
that was basically it except for the ending where Nash is like hey why don't you help me go and why don't you all come down with me to the tunnels help me get what I'm looking for and then you know I'll help you guys I say, why, why, why would we help you what, what can you do for us He's like well I know how to save Barry Allen and that's your cliffhanger of course he does um he claims to but uh mm. I mean I mean it's not the worst episode of Flash but the app the Barry app and everything with the convenient like oh Cisco's sleepwalking oh Cisco's um got and side effects was, from breacher disease or whatever and it, was it was all this master plan of evil Cisco to make him framed yes because it, because what's actually happening is that evil Cisco has hacked his like white noise machine to control him and make yeah. him sleepwalk just I, don't have a white noise machine be a normal person you'd be fine I don't know all of the setup for this was so convoluted. It was actually a fairly easy going episode to get through in terms of pacing, but yeah. just to sorry again question: Why does the white noise machine have a Wi-Fi mode? It's just playing white noise. I I don't understand why that needs to be connected to the internet. Um. I've never used one. I don't, I don't know what functions it has besides just playing the white noise. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it changes based on time of night. Maybe it get it downloads new white noise, like different white noise. New patterns. white noise. <laughs> yeah, different, it's different, a... different decibels of white noise. Different uh, pitches of white noise. It's different white noises. By definition, white noise is white noise. It's it's all pretty much the same. You can change it with pitch and whatnot. <sighs> Borderline. Maybe, maybe maybe they do like white noise, but like created from something I don't know. Like this is white noise created completely out of I don't know cows mooing or something. I don't know. Put a lot of cows mooing into a system, and it just spurts out this sort of white noise this sound. But it's actually all little little moos if you listen to it closely. <laughs> I feel like they're just 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 stretching it a little bit. Are you trying to do like an ASMR thing here? <laughs> you need to get a binaural mic to do that properly. <laughs> I wasn't trying to plan and get into the, the ASMR as a as a as a career path, so, uh, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was Flash. I thought. I mean, I. It's, just, it's a really stupid episode. The Barry thing was really silly, but bizarrely, it wasn't the hardest episode to watch. But Joe's you know Joe's bizarre about this season is it's making me long for Cicada because Cicada was a constant source of making me laugh at the very least. And this season doesn't quite have that. This season just has lots of really dull things. You know, Cicada for you is what Prometheus is for me, isn't it? Every meta will die. Yeah. So you have that. I have my Prometheus theme music. Go on, hum it. <laughs> no, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> do, do, do. Yes, yes, very, very good. <laughs> but that, whenever I hear that, I get excited. It's just, it's like, yes, we're back to stupid shit. Let's move on. To Arrow season eight, episode four. It's called Present Tense. In the last episode, the future kids all came to the present day. Um, well, some of them did. Well, Mia, William, and uh, Connor, uh, to be precise. But uh, they they arrived, and we have this sort of face off of them explaining who they are, and like, Dad, Dad, Mia, William, and then Connor's like, Dad, and then, <laughs> and then Diggle's like, like, What? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I ain't adopted you yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, son. Um, so, but they're also worried that one of the, that JJ, the uh, leader of the Deathstrokes, uh, Diggle's actual son, is is also came back because Deathstrokes start doing things. But then it's kind of a nice fake out. I'll, I'll give it a little bit of credit when he takes off the mask and it's just Grant and they're like, who's JJ? I'm like, oh, that's I, oh, you know, that's not bad because it's, it's kind of reasonable, right? In that, yeah, of course yeah. it's Grant. Yeah, well, because the way they play it, when it cuts to like, just a Deathstroke mask, like the guy standing on top of the building at one point, you're like, oh, he came back too. It wasn't just the the three yeah, heroes. Yeah, and then but... it's no, 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 this is just how it starts. So, which by the way, there's no explanation in this episode for how they come back. Well, I mean, we assume it was the Monitor, but I mean, like, there's literally never a 
They barely even I, question it. They basically just go, oh, that's weird, and then just move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of weird. Um, but I, I we'll get there, maybe. I'll, t- I'll tell you what I... Uh... I'll, I'll give some positives out of the way first. One main positive is I actually thought the scene... Uh, well, I think in general, Amel's acting with the, the kids, grown-up kids, is pretty good. But the scene specifically with William, where yeah. William tells him he's gay, I actually thought it was a really good scene. I was going to say that as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was watching, I was like, hey, this is actually not bad. Like, this is well well handled. What's going on? Yeah, because he, he's telling him he's gay. And, you know, he's, he gives this, you know, Amel, Amel gives a smile. And it's like, okay, so he's obviously reacting well, which is nice. But then he says, yeah, I know. And he, he sort of explains. And it's actually just a really down-to-earth, really heartwarming little scene. And it feels genuine, so. Yeah. I, uh, I think Amel's come a long way as an actor over the course of the show. Yeah, no. Well, don't get me wrong. He's always been a, a nice guy, you know, a, a, as a as a person. He's always had a, a you know a good personality you know, in, in his presence. But his acting wasn't always the best. Um, but mm-hmm. I think, you know, uh, these days it's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's he's, he's, he's got enough presence. He's fine. Um, I, like the episode is, you know, it's better than last week's for sure. Um, yeah, you know, so, some of the reactions because i mean eventually they have to admit what's happened in the future that, that, that it's a shithole and renee's a corrupt politician his I, daughter's I, I dead i did like renee's reaction to all this um i mean some of it was amusing some of it was kind of tedious because you know when diggle chased them out after and we had to have the scene between diggle and renee when they found out that one of their kids bundled the other one's kid that scene i thought was quite tedious because it just i don't know it's just, why are they blaming each other almost? yeah it doesn't it just it feels so forced because like it's, it, again yes it's the future you can change this you really can it takes you too long to get to that realization <laughs> it yeah. really does but like you know we do see young zoe again because we see renee's like campaigning for uh he's not campaigning for mayor yet like that's obviously down his career <laughs> like he's, he's yeah, just yeah, yeah. i don't know councilman or whatever he's doing councilman, yeah, yeah. I think. um so we see him making a whole speech and uh, everyone kind of makes up and Cur- playing up to the glades. Curtis is back to be the felicity of the episode. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was kind of nice seeing Curtis again. He's just, just doing his stupid techno babble and being mm. cheerful. It's a lot nicer when he's not playing off felicity. Wanting praise from his uh, for his beard. I, I'm not gonna lie. As soon as he came in, I was like, oh, he's got a beard now. It was the first thing I noticed, and then he's like, hey, check out my beard. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, I chuckled. So, I mean, I wasn't necessarily super into the whole Mia wants to kill Grant to change the future and all doesn't wait a letter. Uh, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a reasonable plan on her part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the whole thing. I, I, it's kind of weird how at the start they never kind of like made a point of saying, "Hey, Mia, you're wearing a green hood, so you're you're basically doing Green Arrow." Like they almost never address that the idea that she's basically become him. Um, they, I mean, they address her attitudes like his because you know at one point she says, "Yo, I'm not doing that," and like Laurel's like, "Well, she's definitely your daughter." Like, yeah, I think there's a couple of digs to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and and that's fine. That, that that's that's fun stuff. That's part of the fun of having these characters interact. I, but... I will say, I think I like. I mean, I mean, Connor's take a leave. I think he's got no personality either way. Mm. But uh, Mia and, and and William, I think, are more enjoyable in present day than they are in the future. Yeah, no, they are. I think them playing off like the other main characters definitely benefits them for sure. Yeah, um, and and you know, obviously, uh, William is a, a better actor here than as the kid, but it shows even more than than it ever has when you put him in a scene with Oliver, you know, like or, you know anyone who we've seen the younger kid interact with. Yeah, we we have so it's a huge cast in this episode because we have the, the three you know future kids back, uh, Dana and Renee are back. Uh, we have young Zoe. Okay. We have Curtis, you know, the, Diane, you know, Diana's there. Like the, the whole, you know, it's a really big, you know, cast this as, episode. As one of the kids puts it, it's original Team Arrow. Yes. Yeah. Menace Which, do you know what I'm going to say is I thought that was a really weird reference, um, like self-referential thing, because to a lot of the internet, especially the um, uh, Reddit who kind of hates, you know, a lot of the post season two stuff, you know, with, with reason, uh, they they also refer to uh, just um, Oliver Diggle and Felicity, you know, in the early stuff as original Team Arrow, and so it, it's kind of this weird thing for the the showrunners and, and writers to be like, hey, no, 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 
in the future they they think of this as original team Mario. this is the real legacy not just that early stuff so I, I, it was kind of like trying to make it felt like they were trying to make a point to the people who call the you know the, the just the trio that, that uh, i guess oh, it makes sense in context of the show because there's this big decades long yeah. gap where there was no team so this is the original no, period no, it, 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 that's why um you know i let it slide because it made sense in context but it also did feel like a bit of a hey are you listening to, to people on you know reddit yeah, okay uh so you know as per usual a couple of fight scenes there's a whole scene where they have to like run away from a bomb there's like a freeze arrow to slow it down while they while they yeah. make a break for it um grant's going to do basically a repeat of uh slade's plan from like season two or whatever it was uh where what was it called like oh i can't remember the Mirakuru. No, not that. It was the, that was Slade's plan, though, wasn't it? It was Slade's plan, but, you know, they had a, a plan to, like, bomb the city. It was, like, uh... Because you know, season one had the, uh... Yeah, the Undertaking. The Undertaking. There was, like, a name for it. Because uh, they said it in the episode. They said that he's going to do his version of this. Like, there, there was a lot of jokes in this episode about things being 2.0. You know, at one point, Curtis is with William on the on the comms, and they're like, oh, it's, uh... You know, the Curtis Felicity, or Curtis Smoke team up. 2.0 or whatever. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of that going on through the episode so yeah um, and obviously they're sticking around um, the end of the episode tells us that Oliver's going to Russia next because basically he asked Curtis at one point to hey uh, so there's this wave of energy that's destroyed Earth 2 and when I say Earth 2 I mean you know, the whole universe uh, can we replicate that so we can kill a god because that's what we're doing <laughs> and Curtis is like wait what because again remember that Oliver, after last episode, is believing from the book that the Monitor is a villain and should be stopped. That's where he is right now in his thought process. Yes. Yeah. We we know better, but... Yes. And the Monitor is also given his weird cliffhangers because he goes to see Laurel and says, Hey, do you want your Earth 2 back? I can give it back to you. But you have to do one thing for me and that's betray Oliver Queen and that's your it, it, cliffhanger. Is it possible this is anti-Monitor in disguise? Uh, it's possible. I feel like the more likely option, though, is that what he's going to ask her to do is actually still ultimately good. Like, you know, like it feels yeah. like it's betraying Oliver, but it's really, you know. Yeah, that's possible, yeah. The greater but, good. Uh, yeah, like you say, Russia next time because, we, well, you know, well, a lot we'll, of stuff in Russia. Yeah, we're doing the greatest hits. We have to do the Russia episode. We've done, we've done the Hong Kong episode. We've done... Uh, done Deathstroke now. Done Deathstroke. We've uh, done the pilot. Done the pilot. Yeah, we, we have, we have, yeah we're doing all the, the, the greatest hits, apparently. Um... So, we'll get there. Um, I, I was worth mentioning though, like Dinah and Renee are like, hey, we should start that Canary net Network now. I mean, because they weren't going to do it originally until later, but it's like, hey, that sounds like a useful thing. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. So, they're setting that up. So, that'll be something that's in place for the spinoff when that launches. Yeah. Are we going to see a Russian dude next time? I've forgotten his name. Did An he die? Anatoly? I don't think he yeah. died. No, I think he's around. That's good, because I like that guy. He's, 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 usually, he's, he's typically been one of the better spots in the last couple of seasons. Maybe he did before. that, I don't know. I feel like he was kind of more villainous, but then he helped Oliver out of spite and then maybe died by the end of that. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling like. Did he did he sacrifice himself at one point? This, this just tells you how much this show sinks in our brains. Like, it's just... Hey, in my defense, I, I'm so drunk by the time I finish an episode of Arrow that it's a miracle I can remember enough to talk about it two days later. <laughs> um, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um... Yeah, it, it was aggressively okay. Which is better than the last four seasons. With one really good scene. Yeah. Which, which I have to actually give. Um, so, so that's fair. Um, I, you know, I mean, picking a favourite again this week, it's not a great task. I'm, I'm not particularly excited about the prospect. It's, uh, it's probably Arrow or Batwoman. Yeah, yeah. Those two are kind of landing slightly higher than the others right now um like, batwoman's mo more consistent across this episode i think but arrow did have the one th yeah. that scene is better than anything in batwoman i think arrow probably wins because there's, there's an inherent fun of all the characters being told that their future is going to be shit although i'm sure it's all going to be changed after crisis that this, that, that, that future is never going to happen now like they're all going to fade away because because flash taught us that's what happens in time travel no they're going to stick universe. around because we've got a cross we've, or not a crossover we've got a spin-off to do Nora would like a word. <laughs> what are you telling me? You expect them to maintain the rules they set up last season? I mean, 
Would it be too much to ask? That's not going to happen. Crisis is going to just get them out of it. Like, no, Crisis, uh, time away, me. It's fine. Can we, can we just point out, uh, the Flash team do not know yet that Earth 2 has been destroyed. They don't know that they've lost Harry and whoever else was on Earth 2 at the time. That's a good point. Harry and Jesse Quick are like dead. They're gone. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be so funny if they just show up and like, don't explain why they're still alive. Um, or... I don't know if, if this is a better or worse death than Gypsy, because on one hand, technically we saw Earth 2 destroyed. You know, that, that was on screen. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, it was in Arrow and hasn't been addressed in Flash where these characters matter for... Well, it's, it's probably going to be seven or eight episodes think, by the no, time I, they find out. I think if, if, if they did die and Earth 2's like death... Um, you know, if, if there's not some like, oh, they were on Earth 3 at the time or some bullshit like that. Um, it is better than Gypsy because at least it ties into this big thing and it means there's casualties to what that... Because, that, okay, we saw, sure, we saw like Tommy and some of the other characters from like we hadn't seen before die, but in terms of actual Earth 2 characters we care about, to actually have killed Harry and Jesse Quick, who we do know and on some level care about, in theory, uh, then that's actually more impactful. Like, if because if, if that's the because let's say like Barry and that find out from Oliver, hey, Earth Two is entirely gone. If if they all sort of go, wait a minute, what about Harry and Jesse? Like that moment could work quite well potentially. It could. I think the only problem is just the, the significantly delayed reaction to that. I'm not saying I trust them to pull it off. I'm just saying that there's potential in that. The like, the, the only thing I will say is if they do pull it off, it'll be in a crossover episode. And typically, those manage to pull things off that no other episode does. So they do. So maybe, maybe. Hmm. Pardon me, I'm just yaw- I'm just yawning to close the show. Um, yeah, yeah. This, this was riveting, apparently. It was. It was. It was so riveting. Uh, but yeah, so I guess we picked Arrow again. I, I was on a roll this season, but it's. Yeah, I, what the hell? I think it's, it's it's slightly better than it usually is because it's doing all this wrap up stuff and building to crisis, but everything else is also kind of sucking. So it's, it's got this kind of like easy win for now. Yeah, like it's not great. It's not even good. It's just not quite as terrible as it used to be, or as everything else is. So we're in a weird place. Obviously, once Legends is back, we expect that to just clean sweep like all season. But I, I'll be shocked if it doesn't. Frankly. There'll, there'll have to be that perfect storm where Supergirl has one great episode and it happens to be the same week that Legends has this one bad episode and I'll be like, oh, I think actually we're, pick, we're yeah. picking Supergirl or whatever this week. But I doubt it. Anyway, I mean, who knows? Batman we could keep getting better. That's entirely possible. It, it, it could, but better than Legends? I don't know. Mm. Anyway, let us know what you thought of the episodes from this week in the comments, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates or at DC Comics Podcast for all DC Comics stuff that we post about. Uh, you can, of course, support us by rating the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars. Helps us out a lot if you do that. You can also support us by by going to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv we can do that financially you can do that for as little as one dollar per month and get some bonuses for your troubles uh, some exclusives the higher tiers you get credits and things like that uh, so pay, pay for my whiskey for arrow and flash yes uh, or not uh, but you can uh, go do that on Patreon. Uh, otherwise, check out Comics from the Multiverse, the show that me, Connor, and Matt do every week where we talk about DC's comic books. Uh, so you can check that out. That's kind of the, 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 the big sister to this show. So mm. go, and, uh, go and check that out. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching DC TV shows, guys. And remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better. <laughs>